In the tutorials we have been doing on different types of bits, you ask us many times about the special bits, so we have decided to do a tutorial where we review the special bits, at least the best known or most widely used. For this, we have done what is necessary. We have taken a look at what is usually in stores. We've also looked at what other YouTube colleagues are posting here and in the US, the most talked about, and we have chosen the most interesting ones. There are some details that may be overlooked at first glance that are not explained in what we see on YouTube either, and it is important to keep that in mind. We do not usually talk about special bits because, as the name suggests, a special bit is made for special jobs, that is, for professionals to do the works in a more comfortable way, because there are repetitive works in which the special bits help them a lot, or also, sometimes, for special jobs. If that's the case, why are we now talking about them? Some special bits are decreasing in price and these tools have become available for handy people, and DIYers that now can easily get them. We have found some in stores, but the ones that we are going to use in these tutorials are available on Amazon. You can find the links below. If you buy them through these links, we will receive a small commission for no additional cost to you. But, as I say, you can also find them in other stores. Then, you can use them for temporary jobs. Well, let's start to get down to business. Let's start by looking at the countersinks which is a tool, or rather an accessory, which is very interesting for screwdriving jobs. This is our countersink drill bit set. As you can see, the measurements that correspond to each of the screws in which we can countersink the head are indicated. Let's open the box and I'm going to explain the adjustments that they have. They have a small Allen wrench that is used for the following. We are going to work, for example, with this 5mm countersink. Look, we can adjust the depth that we want to give to our drill bit. For that, we are going to release this depth stop with the key. This has a grub screw and always, when you work with grub screws, you have to be careful to hold the allen wrench well because sometimes the screws are very hard and, as it is so fine, we can break it. Fortunately, in any case, it's easy to replace an allen wrench. This first stop allows us to regulate the depth that we want to give to the hole. Let's leave it in an intermediate position. We do not need to give it much depth because we are countersinking the head. But if we want to take advantage to hollow out some board material, it will also do the job. And this second stop gives us the depth of the countersink that we are going to do. We are going to drop it here and take it out so that you understand it better. If I remove this stop, I have this entire path if I want to completely bury the head. The truth is that I would have to bury it very low. We sometimes do this when we want heads to be hidden. We are going to try it and, thus, we see it in practice. To use the countersink, of course, we always put the drill position. We are going to put this bit and we are going to do it all the way down until it reaches the top. Now we are going to place the screw. As you can see, with that depth that we have given it in a soft wood like this, the head fits perfectly below the limit. We can cover it and make it totally hidden. If we do the same here and we do not go as deep, we just make a first contact with the wood. When we test with the screw, we will see how the head is flush perfectly. This depth varies a little depending on the hardness of the wood. In harder woods, you will have to tighten a bit and, in woods as soft as the one I am using, you will have to be careful not to go too deep. Look, we are using screws of 5 by 40 millimeters. That is, 5 is the diameter, and yet we are using a 3.5mm countersink. Why this difference? 
The reason is that when we say that this screw is 5 mm, we mean both the inside of the screw and the outside of the threading. This means that, if we put this with a 5 bit, with it, we are going to drill not only the inside of the screw but what would be equivalent to its threading. And in this way, the screw will never thread. Always keep this in mind, we must leave a minimum margin of 1 mm or 1.5 mm when using these countersinks. In fact, the head matches us perfectly as you have seen. We will understand it better working on a harder surface. We are going to make two holes, first with the stop and then without it. We are going to remove the stop and we are going to go to the bottom as well. As you can see, as it is a harder material, as soon as we reach the end of the path, the bit does not go deeper. Now, when we put the screws in, we see that in the first one the head is flush, a little more than even flush, and, in the other, the depth is lower. If we want to make it flush, nothing happens, no problem, unscrew a little and we put it in the position that we want. The screw will not lose clamping. We can do this type of caps directly with the material that the board gives off, we mix it with glue, we close it well and then we can sand it when it is dry. With this countersink, of course, the process of drilling these holes and leveling the heads is much faster and safer. If you don't have a countersink like this, remember that we have either hand countersinks that do this function or, you can use the trick that our colleague Leo taught us in a previous video. We choose a drill bit of the size of the head of the screw and gently rest it on the screw reversing the turn which goes backwards, and, in this way, it makes a very small perforation, just enough to hide the head without difficulty. Our next accessory is this step drill bit set. Before I said that we can countersink in many ways. But in the case of metal, we always have to use this type of bits. The reason is that when you try to buy metal drill bits, it is very difficult to find them above half an inch. Thus, you may find it difficult to make a bigger hole because, for example, you need to have clearance in a piece. For this reason, it is very useful to have this set of step drill bit. The limitation is that we cannot work with thick steel plate. The reason is very simple. Since we have steps that are very small, in thick plate we would be working simultaneously on two different levels. This is basically intended to work on supports, like plates, aluminum, plastic, but always thinking about fine thicknesses like those of these plates. As you can see, the perforation we have made is about 4 mm, 5 30 seconds of an inch. To start, we will always use cutting oil. This increase the lifetime of our bit. Although it is coated in cobalt and is a fairly good steel bit, in this way, we are going to give it a longer life. We are going to enlarge the hole to make it 8 mm, 5 sixteenths of an inch. We impregnate it well and start. As we reach the new diameter, the bit drops to the new position. When we have already passed two rings, we will have reached the measure that we wanted, 8 mm. Let's see now how we make this same drilling starting from scratch. We are going to do it first using this bit directly, to see what happens. If it does not work well, we will go to the traditional method of using a drill for metal and start the first 4 mm hole and, from there, expand it. But let's test it first by doing it directly. We mark with a nail so that the tip does not move when we start drilling.
We are going to use this bit which is narrower and has longer steps. We see that it makes the hole perfectly. We are going to add a little more cutting oil and continue. From here we see that it does not advance. We are going to change this bit for the one we used before. As you can see, the difference between them is the length that each of the steps has. Now we are going to try with this one because it seems that there is a relationship between the length of each of the steps and the thickness of the plate on which we are working. We see that now, indeed, it is jumping between steps, as it did before. The next block of special bits are these centering pins. Its utility is, as its name indicates, that on a screw hole, like this plate we have here, we place them so that they completely fill the space and when we use them, they will drill a hole, right in the middle. Is this really important? Yes, because if I have a plate that also has some countersunk edges so that the head of the screw fits perfectly, when I do it by eye, if I deviate a little, the screw is no longer in the center and, of course, I have already damaged the countersink. So in that case, for example, it is important. We also have to consider that, in addition to the fact that it is important to center the screws well, it is essential that we put them perfectly perpendicular. Because if I make the hole right in its center but tilted, the screw will also stay with the head tilted and the countersink will not work. Let's see how we put two screws in these two holes that we have made with a small countersink so that the heads fit well. Here we are going to put a 9 64 screw and in this bigger one, which was 5 16 we are going to put a 13 64 screw. As you can see, they are well flused and we will try to keep them centered. The first thing we must notice about these centering pins is that we get the indicated measurements but in fractions of an inch. But they do not refer to the outer diameter of the centering pin, but rather to the drill bit that is located inside of it. We are going to work with this 7 64 centering pin, that we can be placed here. Now I want to put a 13 64 diameter screw. As they are 13 64 in diameter, I am going to choose the 11 64 center pin. The downside to 11 64 is that I have excessive clearance. Here I have a problem. If I put a larger measurement than 11 64 that would fit me better, the hole I make for my screw is thicker than it should be. I have two options. Take a chance and make the hole with the one that has clearance, or use this and make a larger hole but drilling only a little, just enough to mark the screw guide and that it stays fixed underneath. I am going to trust in this measure to center my screw well. But I will be careful not to do more than a starting mark so I can hold it. This one quarter centering pin is roughly equivalent to 11 64 so what I'm going to do is put it in very carefully, just a little bit, to mark the entrance. If I go too deep, I'm going to remove the material that the screw has to insert. Now we are going to insert the screw. As you can see, it does not go in well. Since it doesn't have a good guide, it goes without a good direction. We have to force it by hand and we see that it ends up being a little displaced and a little tilted. It seats but does not seat properly on the countersink. What these centering pins do, for sure, is to place this type of plates or classic hinges for cabinets where 
As you can see, they have a perfect countersink to fit the centering head. Thus, in this way, the screw is well centered and its head is perfectly flush with the seat of the die. As you can see, apart from this specialized use, the centering pin will not give us many possibilities for the usual DIY work. And so far, these are the first special bits. We have more. We are going to prepare the tests to show you. This is going to be in the next video. At the moment, in this one, as always, please, remember to give us your like, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, click the bell icon to receive notifications, and share this video with all your friends who like DIY. See you soon with more special bits.